Life itself is an adventure in so many different ways. I'm sure many of you agree with me on that. The moment you think you know exactly where life is heading, it can be the moment you're losing it altogether. So what brings me here, to this beautiful scenery? I just couldn't find a better canvas for the story that I'm about to tell you. Maybe I'm not just here for the story. Because this place is a pleasant sight for sore eyes and like soothing balm for a jaded soul. I used to be the guy who took many things for granted. I don't think it even occurred to me at the time just how simple life was when I was in good health. I guess you just live and you learn. And every stage has its own set of problems. At least I've made up my mind, never to let Addison's disease become the limiting factor in my life. The tricky part is when you lose health so gradually. Without knowing how or why you're being changed. You make it to a certain point until you find yourself struggling even just to get through the hours of the day. And the hardest of feelings that no one can see your struggle. It just doesn't show on the outside. I began to lose a lot of precious energy. It was like slowly dimming the light in my lamp until there was nothing but darkness to be seen. I was spending my days with an extreme weariness, a fatigue far beyond word and expression. I fell deeper and deeper into depression. It was like gravity dragged me towards the ground. There wasn't a single doctor who seemed to understand. What is going on inside of me? Without knowing it, I had embarked on a most dreadful journey toward a big, black hole. I started asking myself really deep questions like 
is it worth living? And for how long can I carry on? I was calling out for help more and more often. I knew there was something wrong. But eventually, the other side would just hang up. Three years down the line, and I was really lost, without a glimmer of hope. What happened next was going to change my life. What is wrong with me? Where am I now? So dark in here. I can't find my way back. Can anyone hear me? I was in a terrible state and still facing distrust from my doctors. I had noticed all kinds of weird reactions in my body, but this one really freaked me out. The tone of my skin was becoming strangely tanned, without any effort whatsoever, and it was very noticeable. I just couldn't explain it. But I'm telling you, it wasn't a holiday. I was at work. I suddenly got terribly sick to my stomach. I got nauseous, vomiting, and extremely faint. I called home for them to pick me up. Then everything degraded very rapidly. That same night, I passed out in the ambulance and fell into a coma. I was having my first Addisonian crisis, a fatal condition where the adrenal glands stop working and there is not enough cortisol or stress hormone in the body. You need immediate medical care if that happens. But long before that, you need to know what the underlying problem is in order to get the right care. Fortunately, my spouse, who never ceased to believe in me, she had mindfully observed my peculiar cravings for salty licorice. She watched over me in the hospital. She even felt that I squeezed her hand when I was balancing on the thin line during one of my four days of unconsciousness. The doctors were trying hard to comprehend and make sense of everything I had been going through. Finally, they figured it out, clued in specifically by the mention of my craving for salt. Now, with cortisone and saline infusion slowly trickling its way into my veins, a weak shimmer of light suddenly appeared at the end of the tunnel. I was coming back. In fact, I can still remember it quite vividly. Reaching for that light in the far distance and then waking up. It was like waking up to a different reality, with a rare medical condition in my journal. 
what really bothered me there at the ward was that I learned nothing about how to deal with my condition. Do I have a terminal illness or a chronic one? Would this even kill me in the end? So many questions left without an answer. The way I see it, in order to get the right care with Addison's and other rare diseases, awareness alone is the ultimate lifesaver. So I made a promise to myself. I should make a difference. Diagnosed with diabetes since before, now Addison's and a few years later, Graves' disease as well, I was facing a harsh reality. I certainly needed a change and to find a new balance. I started to exercise again. I felt better with the release of endorphins. Somewhere along, I rediscovered it old, solid invention I had used many times before. The bicycle. The freedom. The sights. And of course, the rush of adrenaline. My wheels are spinning ever since. When I ride the bike, it feels like nothing can stop me. It could have been any other activity for that matter. But it feels just right for me. I used to take many things for granted, but not anymore. I've made up my mind, never to sit down on obstacles, but to climb them. Elevation. Strong wind at your back or in your face. A fight against the elements. At some point in life, we all may experience that, as the saying goes, for there to be light there needs to be darkness as well. Seasons change, a continuous cycling of state. Luck and weather, their unconditional turns. Fair and unfair. Mountains into oceans, rise and fall. I could not walk away. It looks like I'm here to linger in the last remaining light.